Hello again. I think you will get a bit tired of me. Let me tell you about one of the most exciting projects we've been involved in, uh, TarLogic, something that we started some two years ago. We got a call from someone. They said uh, that someone is hacking our television signals, our satellite television signal. We know that there's lots of people in lots of places who are uh, interfering with our signal who are able to decrypt our signal and watch it illegally. But we don't really know what technology is involved in this process. We don't really know who is involved, what stakeholders are in this uh, supply chain, so to say. And we are unclear about the way we can go after them. So without starting premise, we started to work in our team to see what technology and what stakeholders were involved in pirating satellite TV signals. I'll do my best to just give you a basic dissemination of general concepts and not get uh, too technical. Uh, but on the technical side, let me explain. Satellite broadcasting techniques are based on a, a standard called DVBS when the content that is being distributed over a satellite link is protected we have a number of additional standards, like DVB-CA for conditional access. Within conditional access, we have different technologies from different vendors whose main goal is to protect the uh, signal from being uh, used by someone that is not a subscriber. So you're not paying for a subscription, you cannot access the signal. We'll be talking basically about the Nagravision technology but most of what I'm about to say can apply to any data pro content protection uh, techniques. Let me give you some background about the different technologies available for protection with the Anagram uh, system in Spain. The older system, version one of Nagra, could be compromised in two different ways. The first one, people that were able to watch porn, encoded porn, at crazy hours in the middle of the morning. I don't know if you know a lot of people with that ability to decode porn, but I've met quite a few sick people myself. Anyway, the other way around this was to compromise it using software. The Nagra algori algorithm for protection would alter the order of the rows and the columns of whatever we were watching on TV. And if we had a TV card with a certain chip, like BT878 or something similar, we were able to decode it using software. There were programs out there, like more TV, that allowed us to see um, encoded transmissions in our computer. Back at that time, I was living in a hall of residence. I had a, a card of that sort and I made lots of friends. There was then um, another time when the technology changed from Nagra version 1 to the, late, to the next one, Nagra version 2. Here we had a number of cars where we could do key dumps from the internet. It was a little bit complicated because there were ways to uh, disable the cards. Key dumps would appear later on. But this was not something I got into in a big way because I don't like football myself. So I wasn't too interested in using that type of uh, systems. I was just curious, but I wasn't really using them. But I would like to tell you a little anecdote from this time. I got to know someone that was investigating about the way this technique worked. I remember that person, they took a board from Medicolder, took it to the doctor so that an x-ray could be taken to take a look at the chips and the data buses in the card and being able to analyze it. The Nagra technology evolved, so we got to Nagra version three. And for quite some time, it was safe enough. That technology allowed content protectors to protect their contents in a very effective way. 
but obviously attack techniques evolved themselves and Nagra version 3 stopped be being as safe as it was at the, at the beginning. So what is happening nowadays? We have a lot of stakeholders, lots of vendors out there. People like Engel, Iris, Fonstar, Envision, Art, Talcum. These guys do generic decoders, free-to-air decoders, FTA. And it's quite striking because almost all, all signals are closed and yet we have a large number of vendors selling other types of decoders. The funny thing about these decoders is that they mm, do magic. You, you use one of these decos, you connect it to your aerial at home and to your screen, and there you go. You see everything. Perhaps you might have to introduce a minor adjustment, for example, an upgrade to the firmware. You install it, and there you go. You have the open signal on your TV. So our work was partially focused on uh, investigating how this technology uh, was working. So that you understand how this works and what sort of magic these decoders do, I have to tell you a little bit about conditional access. When we get the signal from the satellite, this is being broadcast in the same way to a, a certain area. Like The whole country gets exactly the same signal from one satellite. That means that if the uh, uh, satellite signal is decoded, the decoding is encoded, the decoding key is the same for everyone. And it's the same key in your home, in my home, to access the content. So as part of the data that is being uh, broadcast in that stream, uh, apart from the video and the audio signal, we have little messages called FMs, ECMs. These ECM messages are encoded themselves. When the decoder gets the messages, it sends the messages to the uh, subscriber card. The subscriber card uses a master key decoding for decoding and decodes the signal. So we get the stream of data, which is encoded, data that are encoded, but that can be decoded by using the subscriber card. We get the key through the card. And apart from those ECM messages containing the, uh, code, the encoding key, we have EMMs. These messages are used for management to eliminate subscribers or to add a new subscription to existing subscribers, things like that. Before this, before this time, EMMs could also be used as a way to stop piracy happening in the first place. There were attacks coming from people like Nagra. They would inject EMM messages When a pirate decoder received those messages, it would go bust, basically. But the techniques people used to decode that type of signals started filtering EMM messages so that the decoder wouldn't break. So the infrastructures that can be found today do not take into account EMMs injected by the vendors. So let's take a look at this visually. Here we have the signal coming from that pretty satellite with the stream of audio and video uh, data with our ECM messages. Our parabolic dish gets the signal. It, it sends it to the decoder. The decoder gets the ECM. And then we have the master key to decode the signal coming uh, for the video and the audio. And after decoding that signal, it shows it through the screen. Here, we will see our stream of video and audio signals. Uh, NAGRA 3 hasn't been compromised because it is a weak protocol. The main weakness with NAGRA is that the implementation carried out by certain commercial decoders does not protect the transmission of data between the video chip, which is the one encoding the video signal, and whatever decodes everything. So we can have man-in-the-middle attacks that can intercept the data in the communication bus, thereby stealing the encoding keys. The technique used nowadays to decode the signal is called 
card sharing. You use the card from a subscriber and allow for that card to decode, ensure that that card decodes the signal for other subscribers. I've looked for card sharing in the internet, I've Googled for that, and there's a huge number of results. This is what I was saying before. This is another schematic for that procedure to decode. But there will be an additional stakeholder. This is the card sharing server. We have our pirate decoder. We get the satellite signal. We get an ECM message, but we cannot decode that ECM message. We have a decoder which will allow us to send that ECM message to another machine in the internet. That machine in the internet will have a legitimate decoder connected to it. The legitimate decoder will decode the signal with the master key, and that will be returned to the original system. So with a modified decoder that has no card reader, we can emulate the operation of a legitimate card connected directly, connected directly to the system. Some funny things about card sharing. One card, one, ca one channel. Usually, when our card is working, it is pointing at a certain channel. If we want to deliver services in order to decode different channels, we need to have more than one card. That means one card per channel that we want to show open. And besides, cars have a number of limits when decoding ECMs. So even to decode one single channel, we, we might need an array of cars. Another example of car sharing uh, example, um, subscriber on the cloud is suffering from there. What is a typical infrastructure exemplary? In the very end is a room with a lot of uh, car readers and codifiers, encoders connected on a server trying to decipher the messages, the FMs. If I remember well, this picture was taken from um, a police uh, raid in Brazil, or perhaps one in Buca, a room full of uh, subscribers' uh, cards to decode the TV signals coming from different providers. This infrastructure uh, represents important financial investment as to having this premium card with all the channels connected. It's very expensive. We talk about car sharing our systems, trying to decipher a TV signaling, well protected and uh, show it openly. We have uh, two main groups we can differentiate. Car sharing, the best, the normal um, sharing of a car through the internet, and the other one is, is called IKS, Internet Key Sharing. Why we are differentiating? these two ties, basically because IKS, this is the magical technology we have installed on certain decoders. We have an internet that starts working the moment we introduce a framework modified. IKS is, is magic. You switch on the decoder and everything works. Let's see it later. Regarding car sharing, it's, it's, it can be working on a domestic based user uh, sharing some decoders with their uh, friends, colleagues, or their uh, house on the beach, or people uh, trading with these services, and they charge you for accessing a service which is deciphering these MSM messages. When we talk about car sharing, we refer to two protocols, CCAM and NewCam. These two protocols both indicate that codifier that the name of the um, machine to access the services, we are sending FSMs and they returning the deciphering keys. Car sharing at a commercial level implies there are some groups selling you the access to your server as well as they enabling, in, in, enabling you with a service to do uh, deciphering of um, some accounts. 
car sharing protocols, CCAN is the, the most uh, used protocol in, uh, as of today. It has certain uh, advantages such as the triple uses of these for um, suffering the, the signal in between the client and server. These are supported all, with many of the codifiers you can find on the internet. New CAM and new SIS implies having a server aligned port and user and a password to which you can connect and send over the signals and the keys. The, the things you can find in UCAM and new CMs are paid and are free. The free uh, lines are for the user to check if the Connection test is trustworthy and reliable, and this is returning you the keys at a speedy velocity as not to suffering uh, cuts or intervals in the um, signal. Free lines and pay the car sharing on the internet. Uh, service of the CCCAN and CM offering these satellite based um, signaling. Why we can find these websites? There are so many groups and companies devoted to uh, commercializing car sharing. They are testing uh, many things every day. A lot of subscribers and signals lasting only for 24 days, accessing certain content, have certain limitations that there's only uh, one concurrent client connected. There are some websites compiling all and gathering all this info regarding a valid line that can be decoding a signal. Car sharing, redundancy, multiple nodes. The structure behind can be like a, a peer to peer network. In the very end, when we connect ourselves to a system, we are sending our ciphered SFM messages. The system can physically be connected to the cars. If so, they are directly deciphered. Otherwise, it connects to another system that can have this physically or not. And with different players involved in keeping on this kind of car sharing structures, um, peer to peer net is uh, created. It's difficult to be. Um, clarify what is the, the, the one connect. The protocol can tell you if the car is physically connected, but it's a kind of byte you can modify. Which means that when, when there is a um, police investigation, when you confiscate a car sharing uh, serving in the very end, when you check on that, you will find extra uh, systems you can jump off and you can uh, download some information. You can get the whole picture of all the elements that um, made up the whole network. I'd like to say that somebody told me this is true. This, I, I didn't myself. I didn't do it myself. That um, there are many routers and decos with uh, credentials by default exposed to the internet where you can connect it, and you can obtain uh, information from their live and use them to keep ground and hand down CCCAM networks and use them as nodes of a botnet. I, I swear to God, I, I didn't do it myself. I didn't do it myself. Yeah, this is slightly different. IP, IKC is different uh, for CCCAM. I send something on. But this, um, more advanced, it sends us the master key of the ciphering. It tells us, I, I, I want to access the channel, you send the um, channel identifier, of the satellite satellite um, signal emission, and sends you back to Dick. It's behind this infrastructure by seeing the, the, the cost of the cars, the amount of nodes that can be behind. The manufacturer should be behind, but it's difficult to, for us to prove it. Let's see what we can do and how far we can hand down. These infrastructures give service to thousands and thousands of users all over the world. Not only in Spain, but in the rest of the world. No documentation about CCCAN, UCAN are open standard. We can get open source, but IKS now, I'm afraid not. There are so many different types of IKS depends on the kind of um, the manufacturer. IKS 
introduce a cache layer behind um, this can you can um, serve it and send the control works and send it back to the client. It has not too much load. It has is in charge of sending a reduced number of bytes. So our pirate decoder is connected to a IKS server connected to another type of um, machines, the equipments having the cards. This investigation shows us a lot of players and technologies. On one side, we got the satellites sending us the, the missions. We have the satellite dish collecting this data. Uh, this door, this uh, rundown door is the technologic premises now because we started in a garage by the way we're very proud of having started another company in a garage so we have so many discovery cards from so many providers all over the world they are working probably concurrently with this kind of infrastructures so we have so many decoders from so many providers the, the brand new names i told you on are wide rebranding things we also have obscure protocols. We started analyzing the traffic connections in between nodes from different countries. It's very difficult for us to know what is behind us. Traffic captures, we generate hundreds of PKs, uh, files to identify patterns and to know if these messages uh, exchange, go to a control world, go to uh, the information of one node, is part of the infrastructure. We had firmware. Our deco implies being uh, loaded with a firmware. It's funny to note that um, a machine with no specifications at all, it's easy that the big community on the internet is in charge of modifying and designing a firmware completely adapted, which improves the, 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 the rendering and performance of the original firmware and allows you to connect on the internet. We have companies um, delivering these services, which are on the different steps and links of this chain of the relationship between the provider and the client. We have so much money invested in infrastructures when we started in researching after behind car shine on we thought that one single excel spreadsheet to write down some ip direct addresses would be enough um, upon several weeks we noticed that the systems in our inventory started going up and up and up it's a monster different players at China, whatever we were looking at as we were um, researching um, IKS, Shenzhen and Guangdong were um, everywhere. China was the, the, the evil access. So many bad companies located in China. And some other countries where there is a permissive legislation such as Russia and Ukraine, we, we found many uh, bad notes, of course, in the United States and in Germany. Um, any hosting provider having low cost machines was infected with machines offering car sharing IKS services. As we construct and build up this puzzle, we started introducing URLs. We create this drawing. Who else is behind these infrastructures of car sharing or IKS? It was a, a censure in black. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to go into details in this specific issue. So by separating the, 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 the car sharing pirates and the IK sharing, car sharing pirates define domestic users which share their line with the neighbor, the next door person, or the, the, the house in the, in the beach. We also found mafial scene the mafia, which uh, were selling you at a very low cost, the uh, access to um, a line with a temporary validity. With the, with they were selling you the server or the line for you to generate more business. I'm selling you a m machine which can have 40 concurrent nodes at the same time. Um, it is going to generate 
around 50 euros a month, you found the, the clients, the subscribers, but even a car was needed for that. It could be on Amazon F2. Car sharing was though the super good business because it was legal. Oh, imagine an infraction, an infringement of the copyright. The tool by uh, owned by the, um, the domain is the DNCM, Digital Military Nomad. You call the USA provider and you say, there is an infringement of my rights. The system is signaling, is sending over my data. Okay. Fill in all this legal information and you have this template. Identify the URL where the content is located. URL? There's no URL. This is a port. And how is the streaming working there? There's no streaming there. So you have to connect with this user um, pass where you have to apply a tri triple D key and this system will give you back some data. What the data are? Over the next 10 seconds, you are connecting and you are sending this data. The server will give you back some bytes, which are a, a, a counter password, which will let you define a signaling coming from a satellite of a, of a certain country. The, please send me a snapshot of that and explain to me how you are the, the owner of the copyright regarding these bytes sent over by this international server. It was really difficult to, to persecute and pursue like the, the car sharing. Last year, legislation changed, and car sharing are now punishable. You can punish them by law, at least in Spain. At any case, the car sharing um, implies that the players are more or less clear. That they are reselling these systems, and they are um, sharing cards. They don't need even having a powerful infrastructure. The difficulty comes on IKS. Who is behind the scenes? Who is behind this kind of um, infrastructure? You need to do um, inverse engineering. You need to take out chips. You need to, con to connect via c serial. Um, download the firmware from the internet and go to the boom loader part and, and analyze the traffic because there are no specifications anywhere. Nobody's going to document you what's going on. So you will find any, so many infrastructures with processors H400 based devices. Everything you can imagine in hardware, you can find it on IKS. So every device implement their own protocols. Many of these protocols don't, don't usually have names, so you identify them after conducting the firmware. So protocols such as um, the one you are on, SWCAN, uh, implementing Funstar, Iris Commercial Brownness, Gbox, Text G-Share. Uh, the more uh, decodes you analyze and versions of firmware you analyze, the more protocols come out. These firmwares communicate and connect with different uh, machines on the internet. Why that? That's why you cannot follow nodes as a, a spreadsheet, an Excel. The more machines you, you investigate, the more number of machines are. In the brain, we need to be able to reconstruct, to reveal a piece of software that emulates a pirate decoder interacting with this uh, pirate servers and it's asking questions through the protocol as to the exchange of information is working and you know who, which, who is behind. Funny things we have found as we analyze these uh, protocols, control panels. Sorry, we cannot hear the speaker. Uh, we're sorry for this inconvenience. Hola. Oh, oh, the, like I said, we found 
control panels or machines which uh, manages um, SWCAM systems, control centers in China, in United States, in different countries. And from these control panels, they were managing decades behind. So by researching the control panels, we discovered something surprising. From the very beginning, we thought that um, manufacturers affirmed not having any car sharing um, knowledge. We started knowing that the access to this IKS access was done with the DECO serial number. If you don't know the serial numbers, you cannot implement a server based upon access control where the serial code number of your decoder is the, the key master thing to disclose everything. Another important issue is the program obsolescence. When you check out the decoder uh, on the IKS server, the counter starts, and during the next uh, two years, you can connect your share to a master uh, server that will give you back all the signaling from a uh, server master. So after two years, you need to buy another deco. Can you see now the, the, the business behind IKS? More funny things, pointing at several notes. Uh, Chinese brand new, rebranded in different countries, in various countries, and these countries were connected to different services through uh, pointed at new uh, servers. Many more things we had found. Like I said, uh, a priori it seems to be very complex that if the manufacturer has anything to do with the firmware modified, even though there are, n are no uh, specifications to, to be programmed, it's funny that if you change a byte in one of the firmware images, all of a sudden the piracy menus come up. This is one of the decoders case in the pre load each firmware onto the system. You can upload it and download it from the internet. If you did it, did only one byte change, one flag activated, if you show all the IKS part. We found funny things such as some of the nodes we hunted down from IKS was on this very same network blog assigned to the Chinese company manufacturing these devices. One uh, uh, the servers were in one Don, China. The distributors and resellers in Spain, uh, which uh, is very difficult to, to, to prove it from, uh, uh, at a priori um, level. The, the Spain servers are also involved in the, this business, in this bad business, because it, when the hardware expires, uh, the firmware version is in a perfect space, and some IKS servers are mounted on Spain. Funny things, they attack each other. A new manufacturer launch a new deco and the remaining decos from the, the competition um, go badly. So there are some threats regarding this. They attack themselves to uh, restrict the, the market share because this is a business um, stirring a lot of money. Each deco is a, it's a world. Each, every firmware manufacturer is different. They can change the behind protocol exchanging keys and uh, its analysis is, is not that easy because there are some ciphering routines you have to emulate or decipher uh, with radare or ida how many more machines you can find in, on car sharing and on radare as far as i know thousands of those machines all over the world enabling the deciphering of TV signaling for every business and service provider among the countries and servers where we could find the most important machines uh, are China, Romania and the United States. Ro why Romania? Because if you try to contact the ISP from Romania, Romania they ignored you. I have a question for the audience please. I will make it easier because I'm 
cross out one option. Do you think we share? We we do a lot of hacking in Spain. Are many pirates in Spain? Raise your hands. Do you think there are few pirates and pirates in Spain? Oh, some hands. Less than in other European countries. Raise your hands. A fewer pirates and piracy in Spain run in another remaining European countries. Raise your hands, please. It's difficult talking with real data. Tell me it's correct. And how many of you think you are, we are on the same line of another European country, such as Germany, France? Oh, no. many more hands up. That's good. We can include Romania as well. And who do you think there are? We, Spain, there are a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pirates in Spain. No, you got it wrong. There are so many, very, very, very many. We're in the Champions League of pirates and piracy. We are number one pirates. Many people say, okay, so we are at the queue of something, but we can be proud of being, of being top one ranking in piracy. My good, why, why? How can you measure these, my friends? What can I tell you from I know by analyzing all the open servers with temporary validity and with all the protocols you can open and by uh, checking and counting all the servers and deciphering the, the, the Spanish uh, TV uh, signals, Spain wins over them. We have the majority. We have there are two identifiers to point at the very same signaling. The, the truth is that I, I'm, we are about in between the gray block and the blue block. That's our position. We are number one, my friends, among the pirates and pirates in the world. Another question that strikes my attention. Uh, can we stop them? Can we stop piracy, car sharing, and IKS? It's a complex answer. In Spain, we had put forward measures and legislation to criminalize and punish uh, the fact of having and owning car sharing infrastructures. So this is um, a warning to potential criminals. If you, having a car sharing service is a crime in Spain, you can be arrested by the police and you can be fined. But wrapping up and Cracking down the piracy is very complicated because these companies, uh, they're using bullet bulletproof hostings that can be located on ISPs or countries that ignore completely any notification you make to them. And they allow you that uh, inside their uh, networks, everything is running. So these systems are based on networks with even the de denial of protection services. They may even be even the, behind an Akamai or providers uh, who, which announced that I, I can start the multi-bit attacks. The type of infrastructure blocks the, the messages of MME. Uh, signaling messages are not usable to detect what who is behind. And these hostings and protections uh, imply a lot of saturation. The, one, the only saturation existing against these um, services, how many thousand hundreds of subscribers wanting to see the very same simultaneous emission or signaling, one million subscribers or so, so one million people having a deco, send a one million package per second UVP against a server in the United States of America, in China, in Romania, or in France. Uh, the, 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 the subscribers and clients themselves knock down these systems, but don't get worried because these people are so rich. These uh, constantly enlarge, they use F, F2, they put the uh, auto scaling and they start balancing. So uh, there's uh, some other elements, um, IPV in reality. We're going to live together with piracy in Paris for a long time. Unfortunately, for service providers, you have to live with this uh, ominous situation, unfortunately. This is all. This is it. Should, I, should you be interested in asking question? Please raise your hands. Thank you. Aviso que puede que. 
Oh, I, I have to warn that there may be many questions I cannot answer. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I have a question for you. Oh, in reality, it has to do with, it has to do with the, the piracy issue in Spain. Lovely presentation, by the way. But it's not about um, knocking down your top bin. There are so many huge countries, uh, clients using connection to the satellite channel, being located in uh, different countries. That is to say, it's not a Spain the one which is uh, doing piracy. OK, you're right on that. In reality, in fact, we are doing piracy of a signaling from a Spanish provider or company. To, to enlighten your comment, the car sharing distribution notes that at the international level, we are also number one in Spain, by the way. Hello. Nothing to do with dream bags. The dream cars, how, how can you put it? Dream bags, the name was dream bags. Hello. Two questions, ma'am. Did you check and verify the IP uh, addresses? We have uh, used Shodan. Shodan used to, to check and look for these servers. I, I highlighted that every firmware and they could use different nodes and pr different protocols which means they, uh, to identify these servers is complicated. It, it may help you identify the codes from the users, but this is a part we have not investigated about. Did, did you check that these echoes allow to do certain attacks that from outside we can compromise the uh, subscribers and users network. One of the tenets we uh, usually work is that these pirate decos people have at their houses uh, made up of part of a network delivering these contents and uh, deciphering keywords. In one of the models, there existed much more traffic that we were able to explain, explain but given Given the complexity of this analysis, it went beyond our previous goal in our work. That's why we didn't uh, continue to over that area. Like I said in the, the, the past day's uh, dinner, the moment we started introducing more devices, uh, we need to, to introduce UV LNA. So the bridge has to be uh, in one US LNA and the deco as well. Andres. Congratulations for your presentation. Uh, I have now a technical question for you. Oh, take, take it the same. Gonzalo has been collaborating with us in all this issue. Every question from Gonzalo? Uh, I, he knew, he, he knew and he knows the answer. I was ast astonishing about the fact of the car sharing. Car sharing was like a gray area. Uh, I can share cards in, in my beach house, uh, there's nothing l illegal a priori there, but some, one year ago you told me now it's, it's uh, illegal. My question for you is, has this been valid for something? In, in this forum, can we f uh, see some response from the public uh, towards these legislation chains? I don't think anyone knows yet. I'd like to think that the police forces know about this. But it is true that justice, the justice system in this country is very slow. In card sharing, people have got away with it, basically, in the past. It's been a very uh, profitable business for many people, and it will remain uh, in place for quite a long time. So anyone using this system should be careful. If they get caught, the fine is really high. I have a question from an anonymous user in the room. When are you going to give him back the username? Any questions?
Buena. Eh, a ver, yo te la My question is, do you know for a fact or have you done any research on distributing TV signals using IPTV? Not in our case. We haven't looked at IPTV at all. Do you know anything? Some people looking into it have told me things about how difficult it is to do uh, tracing studies for these things, but our day-to-day -day activity doesn't give us time to look beyond our existing projects. Okay, thank you. Allá arriba hay otra. Yo creo que estáis todos esperando. I think you're all waiting for a big revelation to say, wow, look at what he said. One question. Oh, by the way, very good job. Excellent research. Did the company do anything with the results? Because you said they, this cannot be overturned, cannot be persecuted. Was there any use apart from the beauty of the results themselves? Well, first things first, you, you need to start measuring. If you're unable to measure, to at least know who the stakeholders in, are in this business, damaging your own business, there's nothing you can do. So the first step is to know about it. And that is important enough as it is. The second step would be monitoring. Keep looking to see who is behind the scenes and uh, save the information just in case you need to do something in the future. Are they doing things about this? Probably, but I'm not the person to say what exactly is being done. Okay, thank you. Another question down here. Perhaps there's someone in the room that can tell you about that. My question is, couldn't it be better, wouldn't it be better to uh, pass new legislation about decoders so that these decoders are made illegal? This is a strategy that they tried in South America. They banned the imports of non-official decoders from China. And the problem with piracy disappeared. There were two things there. New legislation was passed with severe penalties for people using card sharing and owning decoders, and then the ban on imports from China. I don't like forecasts too much, but in this case, we've seen that this has been effective. In any case, we need to ask ourselves this question. If our signals, the signals we're broadcasting are encoded, Why do people buy millions of decoders to see an open signal? More questions? I have one myself. Conventional ways with the approach of follow the money, do they take you all the way to the distributor, to the importer? In customs, is there any tracking of anyone delivering these products? Well, especially if we talk uh, about AKS, because that's the main element here. Stakeholders are so far away and so isolated from each other that it may seem as if the actions implemented by any one of them are harmless. And then we have the technical difficulty from the point of view of investigating what servers, what boxes, what IP addresses are being used. You cannot follow the money using those. You can see where the money can be or who may be making money out of this in the different stages. But certainly an investigation from the point of view of all the technicalities, that wouldn't be enough. That would have to be complemented by other organizations or bodies investigating themselves. Any other questions? There's one down here. Just two rows underneath. You said before that the effect in South America was quite abrupt when they banned imports. Why are the uh, locations in that map? Is that servers with no decos? These are servers and with no decoders. So in this picture, you cannot really appreciate the density and the volume. The number of servers in South America is an anecdote. And banning the import of decoders? 
if the servers can connect to a decoder which is in another country, banning the import of decoders wouldn't be useful, would it? Good question. I don't know how to come out of it, but as far as I know, the information I have tells me that these actions in South America were very effective. And the information we've been able to uh, gather by emulating clients of modified decoders under that type of protocols, together with the references that we have found recently about Latin American servers, is very limited. It is also true that in South America, the satellite TV system doesn't have as much penetration as in the past. They use a lot of cable TV. And just by going even one step beyond, could there be a connection between the hardware distributor and the content provider? Between the hardware distributor and the content provider? Sounds a bit odd. I don't understand. I don't get it. Can you explain that? It's like Canal Plus, which is the one that was injecting the decoding um, keys to provide incentives? That doesn't make any sense to me. Those working for antivirus companies are the ones making the viruses? No, it's not the same. I use the name of a product called Fluflix. I've just made up. Fluflix is a premium service. As it happens, recently Fluflix decided to cut accesses using VPNs. I don't know why. Okay, can you pose the question again? I'm a bit I'm a bit I'm a bit slow. You're a Galician. I'm not surprised. Full fleece sells services, okay, for 60 euros a month or 50. I cannot pay 50, but I can pay 10. Fullflix knows about this and knows about a market that could pay a lower price. Do you follow me? Right. Okay. Oh, difficult to believe. I don't know that for a fact. And it sounds strange to me. In any case, if they did that, I wouldn't know for a fact. I don't know for a fact, actually. More questions? Very interesting. Anything else? Jose, you've raised your hand. Good. One question on this, and congratulations for your presentation. In these surveys, you're always talking about TV signals. Is there any other type of premium signals? that could be intercepted with different techniques. For example, the European GPS system, Galileo, will have a premium service. Could we have companies that in the future use this technology to pirate other signals from other services that might have the same security measures as television? Or is this only limited to television signals? What is the future holding for us in terms of this technology? Yeah, we're talking about TV signals, but there are more systems out there that can be pirated. Well, the model, the technology behind the scenes for these infrastructures is a grid. It's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network where there's no head. So in all of those scenarios where there is a peer-to-peer -peer grid to distribute information between customers, is valid? Could be valid for this type of technologies. Noth nothing else comes to my mind right now where you could apply something similar. But at the end of the day, it is about supplying decoding keys through a decentralized network. So I guess they could do it. Sooner or later, they might apply it to something, some other things. Any more questions? We're done? Oh, right, right. This one there. OK. Hello? First of all, let me congratulate you, because you brought all the shit out of IKS. A big pleasure. I hope the police forces find about this, because they really need to fight against this plague. But it's difficult, because you know what the situation is like. Are there anything, any things in your mind against IKS from the point of view of Thai logic? Well, our job is about research, pure research. It's inverse, reverse engineering, identifying protocols, tracing IPs, seeing how they move with time between different ISPs, different countries, different hosted services, and having a full picture of the nodes involved. But our, our main job 
It's just identifying and quantifying the systems behind IKS. You're basically focusing on everything at the same time. How about going one by one? Especially when talking about decoders. And then make it very clear that I can be sharing, I can be sharing my card with my friends over at the beach. If you're not charging them for it, there shouldn't be a problem. There isn't. There isn't. We have jurisprudence about this. If there is no charge applied to the sharing of the signal with your friends, there's nothing illegal. But here we're talking about something completely different. It's a completely different animal. When you start analyzing card sharing and IKS and analyzing the volume and the number of systems involved and the number of people, you freak out. You realize that there's been no control whatsoever for many years. Sorry, we're not getting sound from the gentleman. Yeah, it was companies that realized that there was a business. It's much better to sell an obsolete decoder. Well, thank you very much. And about pinpointing or naming names, it has to be others, not us. Thank you for telling us what way we have to go. Last question, cheap question. Should we go for, a, for an auction, 30 euros for the first bidder? Is it difficult? It's uh, difficult to find providers, but very easy to find the customers. Why? Why don't we go against the customers? Well, first of all, it's very difficult to identify the customers. How would you identify the customers? Sorry, we're not getting proper sound from this gentleman. He's not speaking properly into the microphone. Well, as far as I know, and as I understand it, there's a number of servers out there in different countries, perhaps some in Spain, let's say third countries, where a lot of IP addresses are connecting to. Because of uh, privacy in communications, we cannot intercept those communications. We cannot identify the customers. We can say what the server is, but unless there is a a problem with security on the other end, I think going against the customers is not feasible, technically. Well, perhaps technically it is feasible, but certainly not feasible legally, and I don't think that is the way. Going against the end users of those systems, you need to go against those that are making money out of it. The different vendors or the different communities that are setting up these systems. That's my own personal opinion. Well, thank you very much, Andres. Thank you.